स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया with uh, the basics of pdes what i mean by that is what we want to talk about is the first question should be what is a pde right what is pde and basically what we want to talk is uh, talk here i mean obviously along with the definition we want to say that what is so we want to distinguish uh, maybe that is a second question uh difference okay difference between pde and then ode right so that's the second question the third question q3 what is it it is that uh, i mean we want to classify the pdes okay classify pd classify pd based on linearity okay linear rate okay so that's uh, the third question the fourth question should be we want to find some strategies okay strategies for studying pds for studying pd okay so let us answer the first question what is pd so p d e right? definition so here whenever we are saying pd all we will always assume that omega right is a is an open domain which is a subset of rn for some n yes n can be so here n can be Uh, 1 2 3 okay but most of the times we will assume that n is greater than equal 3 okay but uh, so maybe a small note 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 we will generally assume generally assume n is always greater than equal I mean, for n equals to one, it will turn out to be a, um, a PD is an OD, and that is by definition a PD also. But uh, I mean, we call that as an OD. So just to distinguish between a PD and OD, we just call it n greater than equal to. There are more distinctions, so we'll come to that later. Okay, so that's the PD. Now, what? Uh, so oh, sorry, uh, that's the domain which we are talking about. So that is an open domain. Now, the um, thing is this: what is a PD? so an expression so pd so this is the definition definition right so an expression on a relation a relation a of so let me start by defining uh, maybe a second order okay i mean a second order uh, pd right so d to u d u u x is equals to c right all of this depends on x so whenever i'm specifying is d to u of x d u of x i haven't wrote it but uh, this is the thing the relation something like this this is equals to 0 for uh, x in omega is called a is called a second order pd pd where f this is a relation from what to f c d to u so let me remind you u let's say okay uh, i mean uh, it depends on where you are starting from let's say u subset omega subset of r to 2r r to 2r so what is d to u if you remember d to u is u x x u x y u y y y x u y y right so that's a two cross two matrix right 
so uh, i mean if if you are looking for uh, d2u but u is from omega subset of rn to r yes then this this particular thing is a subset of r n square right d2u so the for n equals to so when omega is a subset of rn d2u is a subset of r n square so if so here i am assuming omega is subset of rn so if d2u d2u for a fixed x right d2u is an element of r n square and then you have du du is just the gradient of u and in this case it is a element of rn right so you see in this case what is du du is essentially the gradient of u which is given by ux and uy right so in n dimension it is ux1 ux2 ux3 so basically that's an element of so here it is an element of r2 and in that case it's an element of rn right so and u u of x u generally uh, we assume u to be a function uh, from r n to r right it's a real valued function so u of x is a real so this is r times x we are assuming it to be an element from omega which is a subset of r n so this is again from r n to f of all of this is zero right so this is a real valued function so uh, where f is given by this is given okay is given given and and you will be given u from omega to r sorry this is the unknown u from omega to r is the unknown okay so basically what is a pd is nothing but a relation which is on d to u du u x is equals to zero okay now let us understand uh, uh, this particular thing with some example so uh, okay uh, some notes huh? some notes so this definition i just gave it for us uh, just to make life simple second order if you want to make it a k order so uh, let's say k order okay k order pd how should it look like so k order pd will look like this uh, it is f of dk u dk minus 1 u du u x equals to 0 right so it, it becomes more complicated that's all so where f if you see dk u in that case it will be an element of r n power q okay so this is r n k r n k minus 1 times r n r omega 2 r okay okay there is a small uh, mistake which i did see here when i am defining d2 u is in r n square d u is in r n u is in r right u of x is in r and this x is in r n obviously but this x i am taking it from omega so this this r n is not right i have to change it to omega okay so let me change it to omega omega right it is obviously subset of one but uh, it has to should be omega right so uh, here uh, for a k dot of equation it looks like this let us look at some examples so let's say laplacian of u right yeah it is defined by u x x plus u x y let's let's concentrate only on the uh, two dimensional version or let's say you know um, let us concentrate only on the um, two dimensional version with second order equation okay so this is uxx plus uyy equals to zero so you can see that this is a uh, this is a pd why because what is the function here f of du d sorry d to u du ux if you define it like this what is this this is basically the trace of d to u right if you define it if you define f to be the trace of d to u so essentially uh, i mean if you want i mean here i wrote it like this d to u is an element of r n square right yeah and whenever i'm basically writing it as a trace i'm assuming that uh, i mean 
RM square, you just write the elements of RM square and you just take the diagonal elements there, add it up, that's your press. And in this case, f of d to u du ux is defined by this. Once you define it like this, press of d to u is equal to zero will give you Laplace and this, right? And that's your PD. That's one example. So let's look at a, another example, easy example, ux plus cy equals to c. Okay, that is the example of a transport equation. Now, if we want to look at this thing as a PD, how should we write it? See, this is a first order uh, PD, right? First order because the highest uh, derivative which is involved in the equation is uh, one, right? So f of du u x, how should it look like? f of du u x, you can uh, see that you can just write f of du. So this is nothing but the so du is ux and ui right in two dimension let's say yeah so if you write this thing properly du is ux ui u x right if you write this thing properly it should look like this no and then you can obviously write it as ux plus uy so if you're defining your f like this obviously uh, f of this is equal to zero will give you the pd which is given by ux plus ui equals to zero okay now once we know all of this what we can do is we can talk about the different classification of pd okay classifications of pd Now, PD can be classified in a many different ways, and most probably you have heard about classifications of PD, second order linear PDs, okay, based on the, uh, you know, uh, nature of the PD, so based on the determinant of the highest order, so essentially, you know, you basically look at B square minus 4AC terms, and the sign of this, and then you talk about electricity, parabolicity, and all that. Here, we are not going to do that. Here, what we are going to do is, let's say you are given a PD, Right, you are given any PD. I mean, I don't care if it is a uh, linear PD, non-linear, uh, I mean, linear PD or not. If given any PD, I want to classify those PDs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to classify those as per linearity. Okay, so first uh, definition which I'm going to write is linear PD. Okay, so what is a linear PD? Linear PD is a PD, so a partial differential equation, okay. Uh, so here I will just write it like this D, let's say KU DK minus 1 U U X equals to 0 in omega. So let's say that's, that's the PD which you are working with. So PD star. Okay, it's called linear. It's called linear if it is of the form, if it is of the form mod alpha less than equal k, a alpha of x, d alpha of u is equals to f of x right so for some for some some f okay i don't care it is given so for some given f uh, if your this thing if this f the expression of f looks like this so this is the alpha of x d alpha of u so basically the power of the all the derivative should not be more than one so in that case uh, and uh, obviously, there are some coefficients involved with the derivative. If it looks like this, then we call it a linear PD, right? And uh, this is for some function f, and some function, some function a alpha, okay, mod alpha less than k, right? Okay, so. And moreover, moreover, such a PD 
is called homogeneous if f is equals to zero. So if f equals to zero, it's called homogeneous equation. If f not equals to zero, it's a inhomogeneous equation. Okay. So let me let us look at one example. Our basic example, which we looked at in the last, uh, you know, part, u x plus u y equals to zero. If you write it like this, or equals to zero equals to f. I mean, it does not matter here. U x plus u y equals to zero. Let's say. Now, this is an example of a first order linear PDE, right? Linear PDE, right? So because alpha is here, uh, if you look at it, alpha will be one. Alpha is so one. So first order linear uh, PDE. This is the first example, and the second example we have already seen: uxx plus uyy equals to zero. Let's say. This equation. Now, do you think it's a linear PD? Of course, it's a linear PD because the highest order terms, I mean, the derivatives, okay, uxx and uy, these are the highest order derivatives, and the power of the highest order derivatives is always one, right? So, and the, the coefficients a alpha in this case are all one. So, this is a second order linear PD. Alpha equals to two. Okay, so let me give you another example. So let's say this equation: u x x plus two u y y. Okay, plus uh, let's say uh, x square u x plus y square u y uh, equals to. Let us assume u u on u. Okay, so if you just write it like this, plus sign something like this, plus huh? sign. Or I mean I don't care. You can just move the sign x around or make it zero. Okay, but let's say this is the equation given. So again, you see uh, this is in this form. Why? Because all the um, derivative. So this let's say this derivative. The coefficient is one. Okay. All the coefficient here is the function of x, right? A alpha of x. All the coefficients here are functions of x. X square. And um, here also it is a function of. So basically, whenever writing x, x is in R n, right? So here x y is in R two. So this is a function of x y which is one function of x y function of x y function of x y function of x y which is one here and function of x y okay uh, so all is mm, right correct and d alpha of u alpha is two here alpha is one here alpha is one here alpha is zero here right and that's the constant so essentially here in this case what is happening in this case we have it is a Second order linear PD, right? But you see, if we change this thing to let's say u is changed to u square or something, okay? So let me put it this way. So let's say if I am changing change u to u square, huh? then do you think it is a linear PD? No, because you see, in that case, there is a term of u which contains square terms, right? Square terms, and the, here there is no square terms. So u and all its derivative should be purely in a linear form. So only one, okay? U, the power of u is only one. That is only allowed. No u square, u cube, nothing. Okay? So if this is there, it's not a linear uh, PD, correct? Okay. Continue our uh, discussion on the classification of PDs, and now we are going to define the semilinear PD. So semilinear. Semilinear PD. Now, what is semilinear PD? Okay, so we are essentially talking about uh, the k order PD here. So the PD, the PD, let's say this PD, f of d k u, d k minus one u, u x equals to zero. This PD is called. Semilinear, right? If if it has the form summation mod alpha equals to k a alpha of x d alpha of u is equals to. So essentially, here uh, the first uh, we just look at the highest order term. Okay, mod alpha equals to k, and the highest order term 
should only contain a alpha of x right it should not contain anything else except the um the, the coefficient the coefficients of this c of course the highest order term has to be uh, the i mean linear okay linearly new so essentially uh, this uh, the power should not contain any square cube and all that sort of thing and along with that the coefficients here are very important this should be only functions of x right okay and so this should look like this is equals to or you can just write it like this plus some let's say a not a not is another function and this function may not depend only on x but depends on dk minus 1 of u dk minus 2 of u d of u u x is equals to 0 right so if it looks like this then we basically have a semi-linear PD. So essentially what is the uh, idea here? The idea here is this. See, we are, uh, we are not bothering the highest order term. Linear equations, all of these terms have to be linear in every, you know, order. But here we just look at the highest order term. We are not bothering with that. That has to be linear, okay? D, D alpha of u, the power of that has to be 1. And that coefficient corresponding to that should be only function of x, okay? And then nothing. Okay, but the next terms, so the k minus one order terms and u e x, all those terms that can be a linear or a nonlinear function. Okay, so this where a not okay is some given some given function. Okay, I don't care what a not is. A not can be linear. A not can be nonlinear. Right. So let's look at an example. Let's say ux plus cy okay so this is uh, the first example let's say this is equals to u square now you see the highest order term here is one right and the coefficient so a alpha of x y in this case yeah see here x is here i am taking for this a, a thing x is in omega right which is a subset of r n this I am taking it to be a subset of Rn. So x is x1, x2, xn. Here x and y is in R2. It's a two-tuple. Here x is in x1, x2, xn is in omega, which is a subset of Rn. Here xy is in R2. So the coefficient, so in this case, a alpha of x whenever I think, it means a alpha of x1, x2, xn. Yeah? So here, the coefficient here, so a alpha of xy, all of these coefficients are one, right? And what is your uh, a0, a0 of xy, what is that? This is, as you can see, uh, so it is not only a function of xy, right? So a0 of xy should be written as a0 of x, so it is uh, u, x, y, this should be equals u square. Huh? If you write it like this, then this equation, then then 1 is a semi-linear equation, right? See, it is linear in the highest order terms, right? And after that, the lowest order terms, I don't care. It can be linear, it can be non-linear. So u square, if you change it to u, e power u, then also it is a uh, non-linear equation. These are non-linear equations, but uh, I mean, we classify it as a semi-linear equation in this sense. So it's a semi-linear equation, okay? So uh, now that we know there's a subtle difference between linear equation and a semi-linear equation in the sense that linear equation has to be linear in every order. Here, semi-linear, we are just looking at the highest order and that should be uh, linear in the highest order terms, okay? And after that, the lower order terms, I don't care, that, that can be non-linear. Okay, now with that, I will classify more. So, and a small note here, which I want to point out is this. See, linear equations, yeah, linear equations, equations are semi-linear equations, okay? So, linear equations are contained in semi-linear equations, class of semi-linear equations. So, linear equations can be classified as a semi-linear equation, okay? But a semi-linear equation cannot be uh, called a linear equation. Uh, but converse is not true, right? Converse is not true. So, essentially, uh, I mean, you can call, cannot call a semi-linear equation as a linear equation, but you can do the other way, 
Okay, so now uh, let's look at another type of classification which is called the quasi linear PDE. Okay, PDE. So uh, the PDE, the PDE F of DKU, DK minus 1 U, UX, this is equal to 0. is called quasi linear quasi linear if it is of the form so here what we are going to do is we are going to allow the highest order term to be function of k minus 1 order terms okay so mod alpha is equals to k a alpha of dk minus 1 of u d of u u x and this is the highest order term d alpha of u okay so the k order term the coefficient of k order can contain uh, equal from, i mean the coefficient can contain dk minus 1 of u d u u x but not dk of u okay up till k minus 1 d alpha of u and then plus a naught of dk minus 1 of u d of u u x equals to 0 in omega right so uh, this sort of equation is called a quasi linear equation okay so let us look at some and obviously where a alpha where uh, I mean, no, those are given a alpha and a naught are given functions given functions right okay so let us look at an example so let's say u ux plus ui equals to this is sin x right so that's an equation and you can see clearly this is definitely not a linear equation because the highest order term uh, you see the derivative ux the first order derivative ux the coefficient of this is uh, neither a constant nor a function of x, but uh, u is involved here, right? So definitely that's not a semi-linear equation, nor a linear equation. But this is definitely a quasi-linear equation because here a alpha of du ux is basically u, right? Okay. See here I can a alpha should not contain du, right? A alpha should not contain du because the highest order term is ux and ui, 1. Okay, so it should not contain. So A alpha in this case is only a function of x, u, and that is given by u. Okay, here, here A alpha of x, e is u, and A naught of, again, k is 1 here, so it is u, x is given by sine okay and then this this particular equation is in this form and hence this is a first order first order quasi linear equation right this is the first order quasi linear equation now let us look at another example the, this will make it more clear example so let's say to u x u x x plus u y u x y plus u u y y is equals to zero okay now you see let us look at this is a second order equation right this is a second order equation but the coefficient a let's say alpha of uh, d u u and x here is given by uh, u x okay uh, i mean here it is ux ui and u so if you just write it like this it is uh, let's say okay let me put it this way summation a alpha of du and uh, d alpha of u mod alpha equals to k this part will look like this no ux that is your a alpha of this the first for alpha, uh, for alpha, so this is 
u x a this is for alpha equals to k equals to in this case in this case k equals to 2 right k equals to 2 and alpha in this case so k equals to 2 yeah what is u x x it is d 2 0 u okay so if you want to write it you can write it like this but i am just writing it like this u y u x y so u x y is what u x y is d 1 1 of u okay and similarly u y y is d 0 2 of u okay you can write it like this or you can write it like this u u y y so you see the highest order term derivative u x x u x y u y y the coefficients are maximum here it is u x the function of u x function of u y or u but it should not be u x x or u x y the coefficients cannot be that okay right so that is called a quasi linear equation so it is kind of very similar to a semi linear equation but little bit more than a semi linear equation so here a small note is this a semi linear equation obviously equation is uh, also quasi linear right quasi linear obviously you can put it in this form but not the converse so the converse is not true clear yes? okay and now the main uh, i mean the most important thing is the definition definition of non-linear equation non-linear equation okay so what is the non-linear equation the pd the pd f of dk of u dk minus 1 of u d of u u x equals to 0 is fully non-linear okay fully non-linear fully non-linear if it depends if it depends non-linearly non-linearly okay, very important or upon the on the highest order term okay highest order term so what i mean mean by this is you see here the coefficient does not contain highest order if you allow those coefficients to contain highest order then the highest order coefficient so here you know what is the highest order derivative u x x u x y u y y the coefficient should not contain for quasi linear in cases uh, any you know u x y x u x y those sort of things so anything below is okay so if that is the case uh, with your equation then it's called a uh, non-linear equation so let's let's look at uh, the example so the first example of a non-linear equation is this u x x let's say uh, square yeah is equals to one yeah of course this is a fully non-linear equation right so this is just second order fully non-linear equation okay let us look at another example example so the, now the example which i am giving are very very important examples so these examples are from let's say given by to determinant of d2u equals to 1 okay so this is called a monge ampere equation ampere equation and uh, this is a prime example of how uh, fully nonlinear equations look like the, the point is this see fully nonlinear equations are much harder to solve so uh, why we are doing all this let, let me explain to you so more or less you have now the idea of what uh, nonlinear quasi linear semi linear and uh, linear equations are right so let me explain to you so why we need need all this classification classification see the point is this linear equations are the easiest to solve linear equations okay easiest 
easiest to solve. Now, the more non-linear it becomes, the more harder it is. So basically you see linear equation, semi-linear equation, let's say, okay? These are much harder than linear equations, okay? So somewhat harder, somewhat harder. Okay, so see linear equations, semi-linear equations behave much like linear equation, okay, but a little different. I mean, okay, so they are basically, they are somehow a linear equation, obviously, in the highest order term. So their behavior is somewhat like linear equation, but uh, I mean, of course, the lower order terms are non-linear, so the behavior changes and it becomes a little harder. Now, quasi-linear term, quasi-linear term, so quasi-linear equations are much different than linear equations. So they are much harder than linear equations, but they are very close to semi-linear equations, right? Okay, so these are harder to solve, harder problems to solve, okay? And now when you go to fully non-linear from here, fully non-linear equations, you understand that there is no bound here. I mean, you can have any sort of equation here that you like, and that's a fully non-linear equation, and this is the hardest to solve, okay? And unfortunately or fortunately, whatever you want to call it, most of the equations which we encounter in our, you know, from programming, um, the real life phenomena, they are all fully nonlinear equations. So they are hardest equation to solve. Let us now talk about the differences between an OD and PD. So differences, difference between and OD and a PD. So you see, whenever we are talking about an OD, let's say you have a function, okay, u from, uh, let's say, an interval i, which is a subset of r to r. So it's a real valued function defined on an interval i and uh, and uh, a relation, relation, which will look like this. So let's say f of uk, of x uk minus 1 of x and u of x x equals to 0 this sort of equation is called a kth order od right so essentially what is happening is we are looking at a function real valued function defined on an interval i so here the derivatives are only you know u u squared u cube so our usual derivatives but so this is an od but for a pd you have u from omega subset of let's say rn to r right okay and here uh, there are uh, many different things involved so and the relation and the relation which looks like this f of so uk will be changed to dk of u and du u x equals to zero this sort of thing yeah so this is a kth order order pd Okay, now what is the difference? See, here what is happening is we are talking about the gradient of u, which is again ux and ui, and you have d2u, let's say, that is, I mean, in a two-dimension, huh? n equals to 2, and d2u is uxx, uxy, uyx, and uyy. Okay, so you see, and uh, this will go on uh, for dk of u, and you can understand that this here, okay, we are talking about a multivariable function, and that is why the derivative, the second order derivative, the kth order derivative, these expressions become much more difficult, and the equations itself becomes much more uh, complicated relation, okay, the relation itself becomes much more complicated as uh, opposed to the OD. Um, so which we already encountered in our previous, uh, you know, studies. Okay, so uh, essentially what is the difference between OD and PD? The difference between OD and PD in OD, we study functions, which is real valued function, but on, uh, on a domain which is in R. In PD, we study real valued function, okay? But, uh, I mean, real valued uh, PD is, if we are talking about equations, real valued function, but uh, they are defined on omega, which is a subset of Rn, and omega is an open bounded uh, set, right? So you have uh, the equations involved are much more complicated. So let me make it a small note. PDE are much more 
complicated than ODEs. Okay, we we'll see that uh, I mean when you solve a P ODE, let's say, yeah. Uh, so let's let's look at this example. Let's say another small example. We'll, let's look at which will uh, give you a clear distinction between an ODE and PD. Let's say this equation U prime equals to zero. Yes, U prime equals to zero. Now the solution for this equation. So now U is from A B to R. That is the unknown, and I want to find u. You can see that u of x is always constant, right? A constant, constant. So it can be one, it can be two, whatever. It's just a constant. So that's an ODE. ODE. Now let's take the same sort of equation, but in a PDE form. U x is equals to zero. Let's say, yeah. And u is a function of x y, right? That's your u. So you see, if you want to solve this equation, you can solve it. Of course, you can solve it. Just take the integration on both sides. But the solution will be some function of y, right? For some c, right? For some c. Uh, now you can see the distinction here. Uh, the solution is a constant. Here, the solution can be constant, of course, but in general, it is a function of y and not a constant. So essentially, here in ODEs and PDEs, in PDEs generally, in ODE where we have a constant, in PDEs those constants are getting replaced with some function. Okay, and uh, I mean similarly, you can go on doing this. So essentially, this is a huge. You understand? I mean, when you change the constant to uh, arbitrary functions. The whole structure of the equation changes. I mean, the idea of what the solutions are, and um, I mean, uh, all our theory which we learnt in ODEs, those has to be changed uh, in, in the theory of PD. So this is the real distinction. Now uh, let's understand something called uh, about the strategies for solving PD. So you understood that solving PD is more difficult than solving an ODE. Okay. Now let's look at a strategy. Strategies for solving PD. So, what are the strategies? Okay. So, whenever we want to study a PD, let's say for solving PD is like a wrong thing to say. We should say so. This is uh, this should more like this. This should be like it's not solving PD but studying PD. Okay. Okay, so what I mean by this, we do not want to solve a PD. Yeah, we want to study a PD. And what I mean by this is something called a well postness. Well postness. So what does that mean? Well postness of a PD. What does that mean? It means that let's say you are given any PD. Yeah. So let us assume, assume the Given PD, PD. Okay, let's take a second order equation. You can take you know, kth order, but I don't uh, want to. Let's stick with the second order equation. Given a PD like this, okay, I want to talk about the well postness. So, what does the well postness mean here? So, well postness is the first thing is this. If you want to study this PD, if you want to study this PD, the first thing you want to show is the Existence of solution. Existence of solution. Okay. So what I mean by this is, see, most of the times uh, when we study PD, it is not possible. Please understand this thing. Given a PD, it is not always possible to find the solution, explicit solution, yeah, of that particular PD. Okay. But with the help of some theory, we can of course say that whether there are solutions or not. These are not explicit solutions. We can just say that there are solutions or not. Okay. I don't know what the exact solution looks like, but I know that if there is solution or not. If that is the case, then you have an existence. So basically, existence of uh, thing is if so let's say this is one, if one admits a solution. 
Now the thing is, uh, one admits the solution. This is again a controversial uh, statement. Okay, admits the solution. What do I mean by solution? Those things will come to later. Okay. The second portion. So well posedness consists of three parts. The first is existence of solution, which we actually guarantee that there is a solution. Number two is the uniqueness. Uniqueness of solution. So let's say that you are modeling a particular physical phenomena okay you got a pd and you solved the pd you got the solution right now if you get two different solutions yeah then the question is what are you going to take i mean it is obviously a nice thing to have uniqueness right that if you know that there is only one solution then you do not have to choose between those two or between infinite number of solutions right if you know that there is exactly one solution okay and uh, that actually helps with our theory also that uh, if the uniqueness holds so essentially uh, uniqueness of solution is if solution exists solution exists it is unique. unique okay so essentially you see first what i want to say is let's say you are given an equation first you want to see that if it has a solution whatever that means yeah and then you want to see that if there is a solution the solution is unique or not okay so let us take this other example the last example which we talked about ux equals to zero this example ux equals to zero okay u is a function of x and y now you see this example u of x y is p of y c is arbitrary so there are arbitrary obviously there is a solution right existence solution there is a solution some some way there is a solution but is it unique definitely this is not unique why because c is arbitrary there can be infinitely many solutions so u x y equals to 1 2 whatever those are all solutions u x y equals to y y square all of those are solutions okay so the uniqueness is violated here okay so this thing is not well posed this equation there is another part of well posedness. This is a very important part. This is called the continuous dependence. Continuous dependence. Okay. This we will uh, talk about later. So what it means? I mean, now I am just explaining the exact mathematical formulation is a little complicated. We will uh, look at it later. So what it means is the solution. The solution depends continuously depends continuously okay on the data on the data given in the problem given in the problem oh what i mean by this is let's say that you are given an equation which looks like this let's say f of du u x equals to zero and you uh, restricted to some gamma okay so let's say this is in omega and gamma is some i mean some condition okay data is given uh, along some curve on omega so let's say this is g yeah so that's the equation now you see uh, let's say uh, that's your u and gamma is a boundary let us assume that gamma is del omega yeah, just assuming uh, this is omega gamma is del omega now you see what this particular thing says is let's say that uh, the um, you solve this equation with uh, on the boundary u on the boundary is g let's say that you know that there is a solution and the solution is unique good for you and unique for this g right given this g the solution is unique let's say now what happens is this let's say i change this to this so let's say one i want to change it to two two okay and how does two look like it looks like this d u u x equals to zero in omega and u restricted gamma is g plus epsilon okay so and here epsilon positive so uh, what i'm suggesting is this you just take g but you know shift the g to g plus epsilon a little perturbation of g now what you ask see this let's say this solution is u and this solution is u epsilon yeah you definitely want u epsilon to be very close to you whatever that means huh? So you, we want, we want u epsilon to be very close to u, right? Should should be very close to u. That that's the meaning in general perception. For some equations, it holds. For some equation, it does not. Okay. So if it does not hold, then you do not have a well posedness, and the solution does not continuously depends on the data. 
Yeah. So once you are given a PD, if these three holds, so first of all, existence, if there is a solution or not, whether there is a, if there is a solution, the solution has to be unique. And if it is unique, then the solution has to continuously, continuously, very important case, it depends on the data given in the problem. If those two condi three conditions hold, then we call the PD as a well post PD. Okay. Right. Now, uh, before we move on, I want to explain one more simple concept, the concept of solution. Solution to PD. To PD. See, whenever we are looking at a PD, we are saying in, in, we can solve the PD and all that thing. But whenever we say we can solve a PD, what does that mean? This is a very important concept. Please understand this thing. Yeah. Let's say I look at this equation. D to U. D U u x equals to 0 there is nothing special about 2 you can write it as dk u and in you know, a case order pd so let's say this is in omega okay so x is in from omega so this is the pd which i'm having definition yeah? definition let's say this is 1 by a solution one we mean a function u in c2 omega right so essentially what is happening is this see here whenever in this quote whenever we are saying something is a solution what i mean is you are looking so basically you see uh, this thing has to uh, any u which satisfies this sort of equation has to have d2 u, d u, u, and x. All of this has to be defined, and you know uh, we want this to be continuous. Otherwise, you know it does not make sense. So if there is an expression which contains d2 u, d u, u, and x, d2 u, d u, all of this has to be uh, has to exist, right? And we are also assuming they are continuous. So uh, we mean a function u which is in C2 of omega. So that is the address of u where u resides. U is in C2 of omega and u solves one okay u solves one for every x in omega okay yeah? so what i want is this see first of all u is in c2 of omega and it also has to solve this equation for every x in omega yeah if that is the case then we say this is a solution of pd this sort of solution so essentially this kind of solution are called this kind of solutions are called classical solutions classical solutions okay now why are we suddenly talking about all these solutions or not you see most often than not you may have it may happen that we cannot find the classical solution okay and there are other concepts of solution which are called weak solutions and um, i mean strong solutions weak solutions or that sort of concept but those are not contained in this syllabus they are scope beyond the scope of this uh, course and whenever in this course we are saying something is a solution we say that it's a classical solution so let us take one small example and understand what i mean by this let's say ux equals to zero right and uh, so this in R2, in R2. So essentially what I'm saying is U is a function of X and Y. So as you can see that function of Y, U of X, Y, if it's a function of Y for some phi, okay, then is a solution, right? U of X, Y is a phi of Y is a solution, okay? Now question is, what sort of solution is this thing? This is a classical solution, right? This is a classical solution. When C, phi, if u of x, y equals to phi of y, it should at least be differentiable with respect to x, okay? C, if, let's say, you are taking such a phi for which phi of x does not exist, does not exist, okay? Then that implies ux is not defined, right? Is not defined. And hence, and hence, u x equals to zero does not make sense. So this sort of phi does not make sense, right? This does not make sense. So this sort of phi does not work. 
right? We want a fee for which all of ux equals to zero makes sense. So basically, fee should be differentiable with respect to y. Here we are taking much more. We are saying that fee is c1 of r2. Okay, so basically it is differentiable with respect to x and it is differentiable with respect to y and such that c, uh, okay, phi is a sub, uh, phi here it is just a function of r, so you do not have to take it to be in r2, you can just assume it to be in r, okay, phi you can just assume it to be r, it's just a function of one variable, so phi is assumed to be one, if it is just c1 of r, then you can see in this case, in particular, in particular in this case, um, u of x or u of y is well defined, okay, so, uh, phi is in C1 and that is given to be a solution.